Over the past year, I've planted about 60 fruit trees and typically I'll dig a large hole, I'll clear all the grass away from an area around the tree, I'll cover that with cardboard and I'll mulch over the top. But maybe there's a better way. Maybe I've been wasting my time. When I plant a new tree like this young olive here, there's really two reasons that I'm looking after it. One is that the grass that grows, will, it will grow all the way right up to the trunk. And in a sense, the grass and the tree are in competition, both for water and nutrients. And then the reason for the mulch is that this has been a lawn for a long time. And so there hasn't been any dying, decaying organic matter on this lawn. It just gets mowed and then it gets removed. So there's very little nutrition in this ground. By clearing out all the grass around the tree and then cardboard and mulching it, I'm kind of creating forest-like conditions on a section of lawn. It's like a little oasis, a little forest oasis in a sea of grass. And these two worlds between the forest or the bush and the grass, they don't really mix. I mean, there's no grass down in the woods at all. Um, probably because there's just not enough light getting down to the forest floor. And I bet that even though this grass is like really vigorous growing, I bet you if I got a chunk of it and planted it down there, it wouldn't stand a chance. And the vice versa is true as well. If I took a small sapling from in the woods and I just planted it in the middle of the lawn and I didn't really take care of it, I don't think it would survive either. Down here, stuff is falling onto the ground all of the time, and it's like a constant composting mulching machine. And there's a lot of mycorrhizal activity in the ground. And the mycorrhizae is that kind of relationship between the fungus in the soil and the tree roots. And so the tree roots are giving sugars, carbohydrates to the fungus in the soil through the mycorrhizae. And the fungus is supplying the tree with nutrients. So it's a kind of symbiotic relationship. This symbiotic relationship is particularly important in soils like mine, which is clay soil, because the nutrients are actually there. They're kind of locked up inside the clay. They just can't be accessed by the plants, by the trees. And it's that mycorrhizae that helps the plants access those nutrients. If I think of the soil as the internet, then the mycorrhizae are the fiber optic cables, but instead of transferring data, they are shifting nutrients around between the fungus in the soil, which is giving the tree nutrients, and the tree that's providing sugars and carbs to the fungus. And the trees are then like the kind of, they're like solar panels and they are collecting energy from the sun through photosynthesis and then pushing it down into the soil. And when I think of it like this, maybe I'm like some kind of living anachronism, like I'm this postman who's wheeling around these wheelbarrows full of, of compost and wood chip and nutrients and I'm dumping it on these trees, but maybe Maybe that's not the best way. Maybe I should think of myself more like a kind of, I don't know, like a kind of internet engineer where I'm kind of figuring out what needs to be planted. I, if I plant something here next to the tree, maybe that will feed the tree and I won't have to carry around bucket loads of nutrition. Down here, not only are these massive trees feeding all this sugar into the soil, when they die and fall down, they create masses of biomass. All of this is just gonna rot down and feed the soil. I mean, I bought five cubic meters of wood chip off uh, one of the tree surgeons or arborists last year, and all of that stuff had to be moved. And so it was me spading all of this wood chip into wheelbarrows and lugging it from one end of the garden to the other. Whereas down here, all of this happens without any effort.
this is something I've just been kind of playing around with a bit recently. There was a lot of sort of bushy, scrubby kind of plants around here. So I chopped them back and then planted in some fruit trees. And as far as mulch goes, I'm just putting down whatever happens to be lying around. Uh, and I'm also letting other plants just naturally come up in and around the fruit trees. It's just a bit of an experiment and we'll kind of see how it goes. So in those two scenarios, I guess the first one where you have a lawn and then you plant trees into it is much more like an orchard. And then the second scenario is more like a kind of food forest. And I started out by saying, you know, am I wasting my time doing this? And even if I am, I don't care. I like it. I enjoy it. And also, I like the idea of just walking straight along the grass in order to get some fruit. I'm not sure that I always want to be sort of delving into a forest and, and somewhere where it makes it difficult to get at the fruit. So I like both of these uh, scenarios. And I also think that having a food forest is just fun just to see what works, what, you know, what will happen with the fruit growing up in amongst a load of other plants. This is another thing I'm experimenting with a bit where I'm planting things into the mulch around the trees. This is comfrey and I've also planted lavender and I'm just experimenting with things that I think will be in some way beneficial to the trees. I realised from reading through the comments and chatting to people there that people who watch this channel are actually a lot more knowledgeable about this sort of stuff than I am. So I'd be really curious to know what you're doing in your gardens. Are you planting trees? Are you companion planting? Do you have a food forest? Anyway, thank you so much for listening to my kind of slightly odd half-baked uh, rant and hopefully I will see you next week.